welcome to Visual Wilderness. We're glad to have you all with us tonight. And uh, I'm here with Jay Patel, Johnny Spencer, and Brent Mail. And we're going to do our first big critique tonight. So um, we're pretty excited about it. We've had an amazing um, amount of interest uh, on our first assignment. So many people have submitted such beautiful images. And it was really a pleasure to go through all of them and find a collection of images. and you know, Jay and I spent a good part of today talking about all the different images and what people are putting out there and, and all the different ideas. It was really cool to see it. A lot of fun. So um, let's go ahead and uh, I, I think we'd, we want to just jump right into it, but I will let everybody say hello real quick. And uh, just a quick introduction since I think most of us, uh, uh, you know, at this point, people know who we are, but uh, I'll go ahead and start. I'm Verena Patel, and I'm a nature photographer, a wilderness photographer, and uh, you can find my work over at photographybyverena.com or at visualwilderness.com. Uh, Johnny, why don't you go ahead? Hey, guys. I'm uh, Johnny Spencer. You can find my work at johnnyspencer.com, and I am a landscape and wilderness photographer also, and I am super pumped to be here. This is exciting. Our first assignment. Let's get into it. <laughs> it's good to have you. <laughs> All right, Jay, go ahead. I'm Jay Patel. You can find me at jaypatelphotography.com or Google Plus or um, just uh, Google my name somewhere. Oh. All right, and Brent Mail, the amazing Brent Mail. He's with us tonight. It uh, looks like I'm, I'm in and out all the time, but uh, thanks for having me, Brent Mail, and uh, you can find me in visualwilderness.com too. Uh, really excited. Awesome. So, you know, you, people you will realize that we're in different countries here. Uh, Johnny and Brent are located in Australia. Jay and I are in the U.S. And, uh, you know, connections and technology can be a little sketchy. So every now and then we lose Brent tonight. And uh, we had a little trouble getting Jay in today. And, you know, it happens. But we're all here and we're going to do the best we can for you. And um, you know what? what's really nice is that we all know how to use the technology. We're all pretty proficient at it. And if somebody drops out, somebody else will take over. So no worries. Um, all right, so let's, let's get started. First of all, Jay and I wanted to um, show off some of the, the photos that we saw um, that we just we were really impressed by the variety and by the creativity it was so cool to see people sort of pushing their boundaries, getting their, you know, their feet wet with their this first assignment. And I think, you know, Johnny, Brent, Jay, and I, we we were in there. We were keeping an eye out for things. There were a lot of comments going back and forth, and we were really impressed. So, Jay, why don't you go ahead and put up some of the photos? We just want to show a few um, of the images that we noticed that stood out to us, and uh, you know. Just, just let people see some of what was going on in there. I mean, I, I highly recommend that you go ahead and take a look in the, the assignment um, categories. Uh, you know, get in there and see these images because it's really cool to see what people are submitting. Um, so if you take a look at the screen there, hopefully, Jay, that's, uh, that's visible to everyone. Yep. So I am assuming that you guys can all see this image. This is um, an image by Amy Bush. And I should I should remind everyone that the uh, the theme for this uh, or the assignment for this month was uh, shallow depth of field, and you can see that this is just a beautiful example of what you can do with a shallow depth of field. This beautiful little girl in her dress, the lovely light, and the flowers in the background. You know, you don't need everything in the image to be perfectly sharp in order to understand what's happening here. There's a, a connection between the viewer and the child. There's the, the child who seems to be looking out at the flowers and, and you know, with her pretty spring dress. It, it's, we both thought this was a really nice shot. And um, just to remind everybody is that um, in today's critique, we are going to focus in on um, not only the nice image, but how we can improve other images. So um, it's coming up. But we're going to start with the images that are standing out to us. And this particular image uh, stood out to both Farina and I because it tells a story. It technically, it may not be perfect, but it tells a story of a time and a place as to what is happening in the image. And it also fulfills um, the, the assignment um, criteria. So let's take a look at this next image. Can I just 
um, yeah. jump in there really quick on the, on the last one. I just love that um, that negative space that that she's left in the in, in the image where they look into and and walk into. You know the the um, flowers in in the background it looks like she's she's got space to actually move into that area. Yeah. That's a good point. I, I can see her sort of just in the next breath taking a, a little leap and running off into those flowers, you know? <laughs> That's what it seems like to me. So I really love that shot. Uh, all right, so this next one, um, also a gorgeous shot. And again, that wonderful depth of field, very narrow depth of field, the focus on the eyes, the little bit of detail. What I love is the sort of, it, it looks like crumbs or something all over you know, his whiskers. So it, it's just <laughs> wonderful, right, you know, looking right into your eyes. I think it's a beautiful shot. So this is by Clint, and uh, no surprise, he is awesome photographer. We have interviewed him before, and uh, mm -hmm. look for his interview coming up on Visual Wilderness blog. Yep. All right. So um, this is one that we had set aside to critique. Um, so before we get into the critique, though, um, Jade, did we have a couple others that we wanted to show? No, I think that, um, okay. oh, you wanted to see the wide-angle shot of this, right? Yeah, no, 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 leave that alone. That's perfect. I'm going to talk okay. about that one in a minute. But first, I actually want to talk about, um, just really quick, I want to kind of show people some of the critiques that we were getting. Um, you know, one of the things that we really want people to work on and get involved in are the critiques in this, um, in, in, in visual wilderness itself. Learning to critique is so critically important to becoming a better photographer because if you can if you can critique other people's work, you learn you learn to critique your own work, and if you can be your own sort of worst critic, you know your your work will improve so much. If you're able to see the the flaws and the and the positive elements of your own work, so Jay, if you could bring up that first critique, um, we have a couple of them set aside here. All right, um, just a second. I will need to change my screen share. Sure. Yep. So Jay's going to go in. He's going to pull up that critique. And I want to point out, while we're waiting for him to do that, I just want to point out that what makes a good critique is a, sort of an awareness of what's going on in the image. It's not about just saying, awesome, I love it. Right? That's not a critique. That's a comment, I guess. It's an opinion. But And, and any critique, of course, is an opinion. But we're focusing on suggestions for improvement, and beyond that, the reasons for improvement. Why do you think this is a good idea? Now, I'm not suggesting that just because somebody critiques your work and makes a suggestion that you have to go and you have to make a change. In fact, there are many times where I've gotten wonderful critiques from people and decided not to go ahead and do that. It just wasn't what I wanted to do. So um, it's always entirely OK to say, thanks for your critique, but I'm not going to do that. What I do think is important is that when you critique, you look at every part of the image. Try and put, put forth something positive along with your, your negative comments, if you have negative comments, and try and explain your reasons behind it. In order to get started, maybe it's helpful to think about the three things that Jay and I often use when we're judging or when we're critiquing. The first is technical. Get in there, think about the technical part of the, fo the photo, exposure, shutter speed, that kind of thing. Is it properly exposed? Are the shadows too dark? Are, are the highlights blown? That kind of thing. Then we think about creativity. Is this creative uh, image? Take a look at the composition. Take a look at the creative elements, colors, things like that. And then think about impact. Does this image have impact? Does it grab the viewer? You can think about those three things. Even one line about each of those three things, your, your critique will be stronger. That's not to say that's all there is. Of course, there's a lot more that you can think about. But it's a good place to start if you're not sure where to begin. Look at those three elements, technical, creative, and impact. And that gives you a pretty solid beginning for a critique or, or a judging, if you're doing a judging for photos. So, so we have a question, so I'm going to interrupt here. Awesome. And the question is, do you critique your own work while looking through the lens or after you've clicked through the shutter and open up the photo in your favorite editor? Actually, it is a great question. Yeah. I will try to answer that one. Um, we do both. Um, 
we are, when we are on location and trying to take a photo, we will actually go through a series of steps that allow us to create impact. And if you guys are ever in a New York area over the weekend, we have a big presentation on the other side of the border in Canada. For two days, we're going to talk about impact and why and how photos create impact. And while we're on location, um, a lot of those um, questions in our mind will go through that while we're taking the shot. And that involves all three aspects, the technical side, the creative side, and the side that creates emotional appeal in a photograph. Yeah, and I couldn't agree with Jay Moore. It, it happens from the moment I pick up my camera. Maybe it happens before I pick up my camera. I'm out there, I'm looking at the scene, and right away I'm thinking, I can't include that. I need to include this. The lighting isn't quite right. How do I adjust the lighting? What settings do I need? This setting isn't going to work. What setting do I need? Oh, I need to change my lens, right? All those things are going through your head. And of course, over time, it becomes a much smoother, much easier process. And uh, I think it becomes very, very natural. You don't even think about it. I mean, Johnny, Brent, what do you guys think? Is, is, that, is that how you do it too? Yeah, for me, that's totally right. It's before I even get my camera out of the bag. It's, um, um, I've, you know, I've researched the location, I've got to the location, and I've predicted what time of day I need to be there, and it's waiting for that light, looking for that composition, and, and yeah, it definitely happens for me before I push the shutter. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, I, want to some, um, I, I want to move things along. We only Sorry, have 15 yeah. minutes, so I, I am going to cut you guys off yeah. and say we need to get into the critique itself. Okay. Yeah, this moves so fast. Ah. <laughs> All right. So um, let's take a look at this critique. I just want to point out that um, the image itself is absolutely beautiful. Um, Jay, if you scroll up and show that image, it really is a lovely image. And then Derek comes in and he offers such a solid critique. He says uh, some really positive things about the image, points out the really positive aspects of it, which you know, are so visible to all of us. It's such a gorgeous shot. And then he, he mentioned some things that could be changed. And then, you know, he kind of finishes up with a really nice positive comment at the end. I think that his critique is just exactly what we're looking for. Um, it, if you go in and you read through this critique on your own, I think it's, it's a good place to start if you're having trouble on your own. Um, Jay, there's one more if you want to show that. Again, it's the same idea. We have... Um, some, some really positive comments um, and then some suggestions and maybe most importantly an explanation of why he thinks those changes should be made. Now I'm not suggesting that the, the photographers who created these images should go and, and make the changes that um, you know Colin suggests here for example but you know take a look at it, listen, what do, what do you think? Do you think it's something that might work for you? And at that point, then you move forward and you make your decision from there. So I have a comment on that. Uh, one of the reasons why it is important for you to critique other people's photo is it helps you analyze what is wrong and what is right about the photograph. And even though the suggestions may not always be correct or maybe implemented by the photographer, it helps you come back and say, when you look at your own photos, how do you analyze the photo? And it will, it will be probably an objective um, view as to what is good about the photo, what is bad about the photo. And in time, you'll get to do this with your own photos. Yeah. All right, Jay, why don't you go ahead and scroll up, show the image that Colin's talking about there, and then let's move on and, and jump into the critique since we're uh, already, you know, getting towards the end there. It's a really cool image. Yeah, and, and you can find all these critiques as well as um, all these images on Visual Wilderness under the assignment. So you can take a look at this post itself. It's called Attendance. And the previous post was called Crocus in the Garden. Mm -hmm. So if you go into the assignments, you can see the critique and the image and then compare us to what is going on. And add your own critique. It's good practice. <laughs> you know, guys, what I'm really enjoying in Visual Wilderness is when people submit an image for the assignment, someone or maybe one or two people give it their feedback, give, say what they like and then don't like, and then the person goes back and re-edits or repost processes the image and uh, pastes it into the same thread and then gets some feedback again. So we can actually see people progressing you know, from what they thought was good, then they get feedback, and then they paste, well, they put in a new image to say, okay, what do you guys think now? And, and a lot of people are improving, so it's, it's definitely working. 
Yeah, I, I think that is an enormous benefit of uh, these forums and of having people within the um, community critiquing each, other, uh, each other's work. It's really neat to watch people already making progress. Um, so speaking of which, this image is actually one that I chose specifically because when, um, I think this is Stephanie's image, when Stephanie posted this image originally, this, this is the original shot, which I think is gorgeous, by the way, absolutely beautiful. And then uh, there were some suggestions uh, for, for changes she might make. Whoops. Where are we going there, Jay? I was going to show you the change okay, yep. shot. And there she, she made an adjustment to it. Now, personally, I actually prefer the original image. I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to do a little critique here. And I'm going to explain why. Um, so, so back to the... In, in this case, Jay, leave it on this image for a minute. The reason this image is not as appealing to me as the original, and we'll jump back to that one to let you guys see it in a minute here, is because the bird is off to the right a little bit. He seems to be looking out of the frame. He doesn't have anywhere to look. Um, and, you know, it's really neat to have him nice and close up, but I think the crop that somebody suggested here actually takes away some of the sense of place that was so nice in this image. Jay, if you go back to the original, people can see how nicely that bird was sort of, um, whoop, not that one, yep, there we go, uh, how nicely that bird was sort of integrated into his surroundings. You have those beautiful grasses on the right, they're really soft, they don't, they don't take away from the bird, in fact, I think they add to the image. So um, for me, this, this really worked, I think you have a beautiful composition. You have a, a gorgeous subject. I mean, my gosh, look at the colors in that bird, you know. The focus is just precisely on the bird's eye, which is gorgeous. And, um, you know, I think it works really well. I think that uh, in terms of things I would change about it, there's actually just one thing. Um, and that is, there's a tiny black dot on the left border of the image. And my eye keeps jumping right over to that. I'd clone it out. There's another one is if you want to be adventurous is I would actually also try to clone this out because it mm -hmm. sticks out solely on top of the bird. Mm -hmm. But other than that, the image is technically perfect, um, as perfect as I could make it. And it gives you a sense of place and a sense of time. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's amazing. Uh, just one thing, I, I agree with everything you've said there, but um, I love that little catch light in the bird's eye. It just really highlights that area to me, and that means you know you've shot it in that perfect, perfect light with a perfect angle there. That little catch light's great. Love it. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that up, Brent, because it is. It's really critical when you're taking photos of of animals or people. Getting that catch light really sort of brings them to life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Good job. Yeah. yeah, really nice work, Stephanie. All right, let's move on to the next one. All right, what's next? What is the next one? Aha. So actually, this is one of the ones I wanted to show as, as just being kind of an appealing image. We're not going to go through a whole critique on this shot. I just wanted to point it out. It's really cool. I love it. I think it's interesting. It's unusual. It's such a great angle, and, and it's really kind of a fun uh, little portrait of this guy. All right, so I will, I'll take this one for a critique session. Um, yep. When you're doing environment uh, which is small, um, so you're shooting a photograph which is a detail or a macro shot, remember your environment can be manipulated very easily. And in this case, I love the exposure, I love the colors, the assignment, and everything is fulfilled perfectly. The subject matter is appealing, he's pretty, he's going to turn into a butterfly someday, fly away. The only thing my recommendation is, is go run into the house. Um, I'm talking to Lisa over here. Take a scissors and clip off these branches that are in the front of him, which are creating distracting elements. Now, if those branches were close enough to the camera so that it created a very soft um, sort of look through Im um, image um, type, it would be OK. But since they're so close to the main subject, um, they are distracting. Um, otherwise, the image is just beautiful. All right, you want to go to the next the one? Line yep. Yeah, I agree. I, it, it makes it a little more dynamic and interesting. All right, so should we go to the next one? Yep. 
let's go ahead. Very right enough. All right, so this next shot is from, I think the name is pronounced Petty? I don't know, actually. I have no idea how their name is pronounced. It's spelled P-E-T-I. And uh, I really liked this little bird. I, I thought, again, we have that catch light. The focus is on the eye. I like the composition. The bird is off on the lower left and is sort of looking out into the frame. And it just sort of has a, a really nice expression. Um, I actually really liked the fact that there was light behind the bird. Sometimes you'll find you know, that, that um, a, a bright light in the background can be distracting. In this case, it almost gives the bird a little bit of a halo around its, its belly, and, and it works. It works well enough. That doesn't bother me. There is one thing, maybe two things, that do bother me in this shot, and that is on the left-hand side, the, the fern or the plant that this bird is sitting on um, is pretty, um, pretty much in focus, and it isn't really in the rest of the frame, except, again, at the bottom. I might consider cropping out the left-hand side, I'm not sure the bottom is worth cropping, and I wouldn't want the bird to get too close to the bottom of the frame. Um, but you could try it. Crop a little from the left, maybe a little from the bottom, and see if that improves the image a little bit. The main thing, though, that stood out to me in this image is that the color balance seems a little bit odd. Now, keep in mind that your monitor may not be calibrated the same way mine is. Uh, mine is very carefully calibrated so that I have uh, color balance and it, uh, the, the, sorry, the the calibration is set so that the color of the image will match uh, a print that I make. So that's important to me. But um, it's possible, of course, that this um, you know was was created on a monitor that doesn't have the same calibration. So you have to take, take it with a grain of salt. What I would do though is get in there and see if I could take down the greenish cast a little bit. The bird looks just a little bit shifted towards green to me and I think it's a little bit distracting. So the other technique for um, improving the shot is if you don't want to clone this out, go into the Photoshop and do a lens blur mm -hmm. and run it through the image and then create a mask and just do the lens blur and restrict it to this part of the image. Um, you can do the same thing in the front as well. What it will do is it will actually make the rest of the image is fairly blurred. And uh, the lens blur filter actually works very well. So um, um, that is one other way to um, sort of improve the photograph. Mm -hmm. we've, we've had a lot of comments from uh, some of the people in the, in the forums too that, you know, birds are really difficult to photograph. We've heard, you know, from people saying, I don't, I just, I'm really struggling to get moving subjects in focus. And that's something we're going to try and um, focus on a little bit over time um, to try and give people some, some feedback on that. Uh, it, there are so many ways you can try and improve the focus in your image, and especially when you're shooting wildlife. And of course, it, it starts with a fast shutter speed. So, um, so keep an eye open, and, and we'll be talking about that more. Okay, Jay, you want to go to the next image? Oh, Brent, did you have something to add to that? And I was just going to say, Verena, that, yeah, I was just going to say, well done for photographing a little bird like that, because those little birds jump around so fast. That's right. They, like, they're real skittish, and they're difficult to photograph. And, you know, uh, I've tried to shoot them, and they're all over the place, so well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is not an easy task. I couldn't agree more. So very nice. All right, all right so, next? So this is a photo by Andrew uh, Weisler. And technically, the photo is near perfect, as near perfect as I can make it. Um, everything seems to be in focus. Um, there are areas that are sharp, there are areas that are blurred. Um, I can see that Andrew is trying to focus on, um, on the grasses over here. His composition is sort of creative, uh, where he got low down to the ground to try to get a photo. but. There's one thing you have to remember in the three elements of making a photograph with an impact. You have technical side, you have creative side. And sometimes both technical side and creative side will work out, but it, the, the subject matter will not create an impact. So the photograph, while it fulfills the requirements of the assignment, creates very little impact in the viewers. And primarily it is because of the subject matter that is uh, portrayed over here. Um, dead leaves, ferns, um, if it was a flower, a bird, some living thing, uh, a more interesting subject matter, 
um, you would actually get a lot of um, uh, impact in a photograph. So, um, and this is a theme that we saw in a lot of the in a lot of the uh, um, the photos that were submitted for assignment is when you're submitting for an assignment. Sure, you have to fulfill the requirements of assignment, but in the end, your goal should be to create an impact with your photo. So just make Grab sure that you really get their attention. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, one thing I do like about this, Jay, I, I do like those those trees in the background. They're like little windows off into the distance there, and I think that, you know, from creative side, was really good. But I, I agree what you said. Otherwise, yeah. Yeah, and I that's that's funny, Johnny. That's exactly what I was gonna say too. I love the repetition of that. You know, you've got yep. six trees that are coming down at such great angles. It it really looks nice. And I love love the really really low angle. I think for me, yep. what what takes away from it is that there's so much uh, sort of the leaf litter that that's lying around is is a distraction. It's hard to know exactly where my eye wants to go, where it should land. So um, you know the the focus helps because it it points me towards of course the in focus area where the mosses are mm. showing through the the leaves, but I find that the leaves are pretty distracting here. Yeah. So really nice work. Yeah, and I see. And for, um, yeah, go ahead. For I'm me sorry. too, it's you know where where does my eye settle? Or where where should I settle my eye? And and what is the point of focus? And you know everyone's got their own opinion, but for me those trees in the background are are another distraction. Mm -hmm. So even though you guys love them, I, I might not. So everyone's got their yeah. own opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I could see myself going in there and cleaning up all the leaves and and uh, you know mm. re reframing maybe a little bit so that the image is moss and and five trees. You know, and, and that's it. Yeah. Th to me, it it needs to be simplified. I would just go and take a different subject matter, but that's just me. <laughs> yeah. So, right. so I I was going to comment on this one. Yeah. So um, Tanya Court and Andrew Weisler demonstrated um, two of the most difficult things to do with a shallow depth of field, which is to use a wide-angle lens. And their efforts are very commendable. Um, Andrew tried to do that with a wide-angle lens, so a great work. Um, Cellular depth of field is essentially easy to create with a long lens. But with a wide angle lens, um, it is very difficult. One of the things that you should look for when you're trying to create a shallow depth of field with an impact is separation of subject from the background. So what you want to be able to do is, uh, in order to create an effective shallow depth of field photograph, I would have went and photographed the sheep over here because they're sort of isolated from the rest of the back. If there was some way to coax this sheep in the front to come closer to you and then photograph it, um, it would be a, a very effective image, sort of like that um, Amy Bush's image, the first image we saw where, where there was a clear separation between the subject and the background that was going on. So again, technically the photo fulfills the requirement of the assignment, uh, the exposure is good, the light is great, um, there are lots of details in it. But the photo does not quite create the impact because, again, my eyes kind of get lost in uh, a whole bunch of sheep. I think part of the intent here um, was to show the the group of sheep, but I do I agree with you, Jay, in that um, you know that one sheep in the front really does get lost. It's clear who the point of interest is, but it's difficult after that first impression to really say, yeah, it's really just about that sheep. I think that um, Tanya went in later, she she darkened up the rest of the image and left that sheep how it is, which helped. I think for me there that it would work a little bit better to actually crop out the sheep on the left, um, and since we can only see his rear end anyway. <laughs> and Instead of darkening the rest of the image, I would brighten the sheep in the foreground. That would be my solution to this shot. Um, you know, it, the, part of the problem is that you simply cannot uh, get the sheep to do what you want them to do. You know, <laughs> training sheep is is not going to happen, right? Um, so it's difficult. This is something that you probably have to fix after the fact rather than getting it right in camera, and and that's the way it goes. Um, but uh, let let's have a, a quick conference here, boys. Um, it is 9.32, and that went so incredibly fast. 
Um, it, Johnny suggests that maybe we should go a little longer. What do you think? We, we have a couple of more images to go, and I think we should go and uh, finish those. But in, before we do that, I have a question um, that a viewer is asking. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you that, Varina, and Great. the group. Yeah, we'll, we'll carry on. We'll give it another 15 minutes. All right. So okay. would this picture have looked better with the foreground cropped and the orientation changed to a landscape? So. And for which image is that, Jay? The last one. With the sheep? Yeah, with sheep. the sheep. Well, let's bring it up. I am, I'm I'm portrait. Portrait. Yeah, so it's a landscape orientation now. I'm assuming that the viewer yeah. meant um, would it look better as a, a <laughs> vertical or a yeah, can, portrait orientation. Can I ask you guys a, a, a quick question? And sometimes I do this. I actually kind of close my eyes a little bit, and I, I purposely blur the image, and then I see if I still can see the point of interest in the image. I don't know if it, it works for me when I'm looking at my own images. So I want the point of interest to really jump out of the image and, yeah. and, and be blatant, you know, like that is what you should be looking at. So when I blur my eyes on that one, I can't really see it. I can, I can, when, I, when I don't, I can see the, the sheep fired on and, and that's the, the point of interest. But when I blur it, all the sheep kind of blend in together. Yeah. I think you're right. I agree. I um, I'm sitting here squinting, you know, at my screen. <laughs> I think we all are. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I do think that the the viewer has a good suggestion, and I love that people are jumping in and getting involved. Please feel free to you know to to add your input out there. Um, I think that that the rear end of that sheep on the left is is a real distraction. Mm. Why not? Why not take it in and and pull it up to sort of a, um, you know, a vertical composition. I like the, the, the road in the background. I like the little bit of fence. I actually really like those trees on the left. So I, I think it's hard. It's tough, you know. It's it tough, tough with an image like this. But yeah, I could see mm. a vertical comp. What do you guys think? I would carry sheep yeah. food in my pocket. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and no, I, I think I a vertical, a vertical <laughs> composition. Uh, say that again, Brent. It was hard to hear you. I, th I think a vertical composition would be better. And maybe just you, you cut it off at the, at the rear end of the sheep, um, the, the point of focus sheep, and then you leave a little bit of space in front of it, and maybe you just have those two sheep, and you chop it before you get to the rear end of the third sheep on the left. And, mm -hmm. and then you'll have a little bit of trees in the background. You have the road going off and the fence going mm -hmm. off into the the distance and it gives you that uh, depth that you that you want and and then there's only really two sheep to look at and then you'll know which one to look at. Yeah, yeah. I actually think Sorry. that works. I, I well. think that, that that may work pretty well, but in, in my opinion, sometimes you just have to give up on the image and go take another shot. Uh, yeah, but I am not a big fan of of uh, trying to get something out of nothing uh, <laughs> if there is nothing to be gotten out of. So I I'll That's say good. that. It will improve the photograph, but in my opinion, the the better photograph would be to to go out and do it again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I suppose the other thing is too, you know, if you were there, you would have taken a portrait shot as well, and that's a good tip. And yeah. you're out there and you're you're a little unsure about your composition, shoot both. You never know when when the, when the portrait or the landscape is going to be the handy one you need. So, yeah. all, all right, right so let's move, let's on, move guys. on, guys. Yeah, let's move on to another image and see what else we've got tonight. Uh, so this one, I um, this one was kind of compelling to me. I mean, I think a lot of you know that I'm I'm the minimalist photographer, and and I love these really simple um, details. I loved this shot. I loved the repetition in it. I love the tiny little bubbles, mm -hmm. the details in it. Um, a couple of things sh stood out to me. Um, one was that the bubble in the lower right hand corner is slightly out of focus, um, which which is distracting. The rest of the image seems to be in pretty good focus. Um, and as far as the shallow depth of field, which is what we're talking about for this assignment, uh, um, at first I thought, well, there's not a, you know, shallow depth of field doesn't really apply here because it's such a narrow um, plane of focus that we need for it. But you know what? The fact is, sometimes that that's exactly what shallow depth of field is. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, sure, it's a, it's a pretty flat surface. And I think in this case, 
we actually need a little more depth of field, or we need to take our camera and shoot from a little bit more directly on top of this image. I want that camera facing you know, straight down to the ground, and I think it would solve the problem of the slightly blurred bubble on the bottom right. And it would, you know, really keep everything nice and sharp. So, um, you know, that being said, there's there's one other thing that I think I would recommend for this shot, and that is to convert it to black and white. I think it is gorgeous. I love it. Yeah, I'm right but there with you, Raina. I find the color. Do, yeah. Do you agree with me, Johnny? Yeah, man, I love this image. It's amazing. And I find myself cropping my more abstract images to square more and more often. I just love that crop, and um, this is a particularly good example. And Verena, would you say a shallow depth of field could also be that leaf litter or whatever it is under the ice there? Yeah. You know, that's all blurred and out of focus, so that could be another way how it's, you know, exactly being used. And I just love the composition. Good work. And yeah. Yeah, if that... For, for me, I probably would have focus stacked that bottom um, right-hand corner there, that bubble, yep. and yeah, I couldn't couldn't pick another thing wrong. Yeah, that would be awesome. a, a great Good job. solution. You know, what stands out to me here is on the left-hand mm. side, there's some some yellow color that's uh, reflecting, and then of course the background. Mm. You know, the 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 brown color is not particularly appealing. I would go in. I would convert this to black and white. Mm. It would get rid of the the yellow on the left. It would just leave it as sort of a a brighter white color and then I would actually add just a little bit of a blue tint because a blue tint for ice makes it yeah, feel cold. Amazing. Nobody would even notice the blue tint unless you put it next to a true black and white photo but you know it's just enough to make it feel cool and um, and and chilly you know. So yeah. I want to add a couple of things to this improvement of this images. Yep. Um, technically the image is pretty good um, the part that technically that is not perfect is the ambiguity of their softness in this corner over here, which is the lower right corner. Um, but there are a couple of other technical imperfections that I notice is there is a black line on the lower left corner and some sort of odd areas up there. And there's also a haze. So I'm not sure if the photographer actually used a circular polarizer to, if he did use a circular polarizer, um, he would have actually gotten rid of, or may have gotten rid of the haze. Mm -hmm. um, the other um, idea is, like, I agree with Johnny that um, the uh, focus stacking will solve the lower right um, corner softness issue. But um, one of the things the emotional appeal has to do with is uh, is how you perceive colors. And just like Marina said, add blue, because ice is supposed to feel, create a color, or blue is supposed to create a feeling of cooler colors. Similarly, the color brown is associated with a lot of dead um, after the autumn colors leftover thing. Uh, any image which has a dominant brown characteristics, um, you will find that that image uh, from a, a creating a, a emotion or a feeling into the viewer is um, is going to be limited in its ability. Um, so that was my addition to this um, comment that was already given by Johnny and Raina. Yeah. And I've got to say, I just I have to say it, but as as wonderful as focus stacking is, this does not require focus stacking. A slight shift of your camera angle will solve your problem. If you're shooting right. directly downward, if that ice is parallel to your sensor, you're not going to have any problem with getting everything in focus um, on the surface yeah. of the ice and letting the background fade out. And that is exactly what the viewer was asking. Matthew had a question that says, wouldn't shooting straight down solve the problem? Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Raina is a uh, psychic. She reads the question. I am. Before she... I felt it. I felt it coming in. <laughs> No, oh, yeah, it, it, that you said that was Matthew. Matthew asked the question on. Uh, Matthew, on... that's awesome. That's exactly it. If you can get it right in the camera, get it right in the camera. No yeah, need exactly. to, you know, spend extra time dealing with focus stacking and and going into, you know, getting all the separate exposures and then going into Photoshop, you know. And I should point out that this image is from Ratul, and um, again, I love it. Gorgeous. Good. Yeah, good job, mate. Um, it's, it's just amazing when you can pick this sort of stuff out of the landscape. I just love it. Great job, mate. 
All right, so here's another image. And, All right, let's uh, do one more, and then I think we have to wrap it up, right, Jay? Yep, this is the last one that I'm going to do, and then you guys can jump in after this and then um, see what you have to say. Okay. So um, technically the image is, is awesome. I love the light on the flowers, and the details are great. Um, I also love this little curve that sort of shows the frame. But there are a few things in the image that just does not work out. As much as the, the uh, photographer tried to be creative in here, um, one of the things that does not work out is I fail to see the correlationship between the background um, uh, framing and the flowers. Plus there is a distracting area in the lower left corner. So while technically the image is great, it fulfills the requirements, again, that emotional impact between the subject and the background is not quite as evident as I would like. And what that leaves me wondering is if this was a forced composition, sort of, so to speak. Um, and I think I see what you're saying, Jay. To me, it feels like there's a disconnect. You have the it almost feels like two separate photos and you're not quite sure what the flowers are doing next to the arch. As, um, although I, I think it, it looks like a church or something to me. I think it is actually the colors that stand out to me as being particularly beautiful. So, so that disconnect um, leaves me kind of wondering whether um, we... Um, um, it, like I said, it was just a photo for the assignment, or was it some intent? Um, and if that was an intent to convey, um, that intent was sort of lost on me. So that was um, that was what I was trying to say. Is um, if if the background was something different, maybe a field of flowers with similar characteristics, or a mountain, or something that makes you feel that uh, I can. I can see myself um, being in time and a place um, and and create a feeling of being there. That that feeling is not um, not quite there in this photo, even though technically the photo is perfect. Brent, what do you think? What I do like about this photo is that if you blur your eyes, Sorry, Brent, we lost you. Um, how about Johnny? Johnny, do you have something to add to that? Yeah. Uh, my dogs are going off right now. Sorry, Verena. happening at this place. All right. I'm I'm going to go ahead and mute Brent because I don't I, I, realize yeah, that, I really that we that we can't hear him. Um, but um, yeah, so. As far as um, for me with this image, Jay, I actually, you know what, I want to point out that Jay and I will often disagree about critique. <laughs> and, and this is one of those situations where we disagree. Um, that bottom left detail to me is actually very mm. appealing. I like it. And I think that it connects me just a little bit to the flowers themselves. They see, It seems to have just a little bit of you know, the, that same um, curve and, and the, the flowery appeal. I would actually include more of it, not take it out. So, you know, that, that I think is what's valuable about this kind of critique. We don't just have one person saying, do this, do this, do this, that'll fix all your problems. Instead, we have, we have competing ideas, we have people who agree, who don't agree, and that's what art is. This is, you know, I feel one way about it, Jay feels a different way about it, Johnny and Brent might have another situation, or uh, uh, sorry, another feeling about it, and oh, it looks like maybe Brent can talk now. Brent, what did you want to say? See if we can make it work this time. I uh, did you, you didn't get what I said last time? No. Uh, let's, uh, no, let's last time. That. Okay. Um, I got, I got one little comment, and it's just yeah. it's just purely a technical thing from from my eye. The, the top left corner, of that arch there, is really bright, and it, it's every now and then it makes pulls my eye away from the main focus. So that's a good thing for me. You know, often the more well, the brightest part of the images tend to pull your eye away. I probably would have just darkened that down just a touch, but that's my only thought. All right. So um, I think I want to wrap this up. Um, yep. 
And uh, we can go on about this image for a long time, but um, I will wrap it up with one thing by saying that, remember, when you give a critique, you need to look at three aspects of it. You need to look at technical side, creative side, and um, whether the image creates emotional impact. Now, the last section, the emotional impact, or um, something that says emotional um, appeal for the image, is a lot of times dependent upon the viewers. And in one of our upcoming shows, we will actually spend some time discussing what emotional appeal is and how do you go about creating it. And you're right, uh, Varina and I have very different styles and tastes. So um, a lot of times our emotional appeal for an image is completely different. And um, don't get offended by it if somebody doesn't like it or somebody likes it. Um, or if I don't get offended, if Varina says, well, that's just crap. <laughs> it is just that it's just our opinion, and it's just my opinion. So just keep in mind that the emotional impact is subjective, and sometimes it will work out, and sometimes it will not work out. All right, yep, and we I have a lot of other. Well. I have a lot of other questions, and we will save those questions hopefully for another critique. Trust me, the next time the assignment for next month is uh, what is it? Details or macro? Can somebody pull it up? I will pull it up. See if I can get it up here real quick. Yep. Keep in mind we have um, another details. starting now. Okay, good. It's the details assignment, and go on the site uh, on Visual Wilderness. Check it out. You'll find um, some information about um, you know getting started, some ideas for getting started, a little bit of inspiration up there, and please keep in mind that critique is encouraged. Keep it positive, but but you know, really practice your critique skills. This is a huge part of what we're trying to um, encourage on Visual Wilderness. All right, thank you guys for joining us. Um, we will um, try to post this video as soon as possible on Visual Wilderness. Hopefully I'll be able to do it tomorrow. So for those who could not join us, um, take a look at it. It will be up there for you guys to review and available for those who are members of Visual Wilderness. And for those who would want to join us, please feel free to visit visualwilderness.com and sign up, and uh, you'll be part of this uh, going forward. Thanks so much, everybody, for, for um, awesome. watching tonight. Brent and Johnny, thanks so much for being here. And Jay, thanks, thanks for being here tonight. And uh, we can't wait for the next show. OK, awesome. bye, guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Good night.